and welcome back to Bloodborne with myself, Hollow. I apologize that it has been three full days without an episode. Many of you were going mad, sending me threats, tweeting me about it, mentioning it every five seconds in my stream, so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry for uh, the little delay between episodes there. But we're back, and we're in front of this giant sunflower. And I think it's really interesting to think about the fact that we had all of those little, um, what are they called? Uh, monsters or patients, that's the right word. We had all those patients and that was one, there was one patient back down there that was like looking after one lone sunflower. A little indication as to the fact that we're going to see a lot more of them and this giant one. But we don't actually know the purpose of... Uh, we don't actually know the purpose of this gigantic mess of sunflowers. Apart from it's super creepy and very distracting when you first walk into the I say room, this area, I guess, this plateau. It completely distracted me. And it got me pretty much killed the first time when I started fighting this boss. And what I've noticed while I was walking around the area is that... I heard this cracking sound. Listen. That's me stepping on bones. Are those the bones of all the others who came here and died? Or is it that they were using many of their failed patients and experiments? They put their bodies here and used and used their bodies to sort of like, you know, be food for the plant, make the plant grow big, and that's why we have this, this massive sunflower. Um, a lot of people, and myself included, actually thought the first sunflower, the first little guy like looking after the sunflower, was actually growing it out of a body. Based on what I'm seeing here, I believe there's every chance that it was made from a dead person, that random guy trying to make his little, uh, sunflower. Creepy as hell, though. Uh, we do have this lantern here, I have already activated it. The big door. Now, many, many, many of you have actually been telling me, um, Holly, you really should, uh, go back to that elevator and do something specific with it, which I will do in hopefully this episode. But since I'm at the top of this giant place and I've worked so hard to get up here, I feel obliged to first move forward before I move backwards. Just as I went next to it, the clock tower chimed out. So this is it. This is where that ringing's been coming from. There's actually multiple clocks, I only thought there was one. We already saw one back in the other building. Uh, next to the giant contraption that raised itself. So, I assume we're going to speak to... Uh, oh, here we go. Is this the one that they're all going mad about? This lady that they all asked us. Was it Lady Maria? Well, there's actually a lot more than three clo uh, clocks or bells even. That's the word. Fuck, bells. I said clocks, didn't I? Lady Maria, I have so many questions for you. Look at this room. I don't know, a big part of it, I'm just like really inspired, I'm not inspired, but distracted by the light that comes through the clock tower and the clever positioning of what I assume is Lady Maria. It sort of draws you forward right away without like looking at the area which is all perfectly lit by candles. I don't know, man. I just love the design they do in these games. Amazing. Oh. Oh. Actually, you're not looking so good. Look at the hand. The hand is dripping blood. That's what the sound is. There's blood that's sort of seeping out. And you know what that chair and that position of that hunter looks like? It looks just like the main sort of picture of the old Hunter's DLC. It's a hunter sat in a chair, sat in pretty much that position, sort of casually. But that blood dripping, maybe it's not from the hand. I'm like, I'm wondering, I'm looking up at these bells and I'm thinking, is there something going to drop down on me? Hello? Well... Apparently it's dead. There's some sunflowers there, behind them. All right, here we go.
Oh my god. A corpse should be left well alone. She sounds kind of like the puppet. Oh, I know very well how the secrets beckon so sweetly. Look at her. We She's using the fucking the blades. She's holding the twin blades that I've been hunting for this entire DLC. From your wild Look at them. Lady Maria of the Astral Clock Tower. Listen to that music. Listen to that music. Backing me into a corner. You're going to regret it. You're going to regret it. <laughs> Alright, let's fucking do it. Oh, okay, she teleports. Do you think she's... Do you think she's got, like, a gun? I reckon there'll be a phase two. Yeah, look, she's attaching the blades. Okay, she's stabbed herself. Oh, boy. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, nice try. Also, she's barely staggering at all now. I can still visceral. Listen to that music. I tried to roll. I tried to time it. Alright, quick heal. Next bit of fire. Ow! Wow! Whoa! Whoa! Nice try. I made quick work of you, didn't I? Very quick work. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, goodbye. I'll see you in the next life. Yeah, I had to, uh... I had to know what was behind that door, and I'm pretty glad that I did. Also, is that new? Listen. That, that's the sound of my sword, or weapon rather, on fire. I didn't know that was an effect, and I don't think I've ever heard that sound before. But where am I supposed to go now? You know, that doesn't really explain anything. It doesn't explain what she was doing here. The terrible things she's been doing. By the way, I never looked at the description of the uh, key that I just used. It just, it just dawned on me. The Astral Clock Tower Key. Key to the Ios Astral Clock Tower at the top of the Grand Cathedral. The caretaker of the tower's numerous patients, patients even, known to them only as Lady Maria, made her home behind the giant star interpreting clock. Caretaker of the tower's numerous patients. She was the caretaker of this area. And they only know her as Lady Maria. Maybe that wasn't actually her name based on that description. Celestial. Celestial dial. I'm not very good at pronouncing things today. A celestial dial that functions with the giant astral clock in the Grand Cathedral. When the dial is held up towards the astral clock, the clock will come to life and reveal a secret to its curious interloper. Okay, so that's how we progress. We basically use it at the right spot. Um, probably over there, I'd assume. But for now, we'll leave this room. And we'll head back to where you guys uh, insisted. But man, the music in that fight was absolutely glorious. Visually, the fight was really wonderful. Pretty easy fight. Let's be honest, it was a humanoid. I could just visceral it all day. Um, but she was using the weapons that I've been hunting this entire time during the DLC. That's the weapon, or weapons, that I've been wanting to use since the beginning. I've been referring to them as Twin Blades, but that's not actually their name. It begins with an F, I believe. From some place, perhaps deep within, I sensed a liberation from heavy shackles. What the fuck? Not that I would know. How passing strange. <laughs> I skipped the first two lines. If we could just go back and pause it to see what those lines were, I'm pretty sure they were both basically just like, um, 
oh, I felt something just now, something weird, and then that's what she said. She did sound like Lady Maria, and it says, it specifically says, they only knew her as Lady Maria. Was that perhaps the doll we just encountered? That She had the same hair, very similar voice. The doll, like, think about it, the doll, you, you're the hunter in the, in the dream, right? And you're projecting yourself out into the world. You're sat in the hunter's dream, dreaming yourself out, like projecting yourself into the world. And that's how you can die and come back to life. Because when you die, you just return here and you project yourself out again. You're not really there at all. You're not really fighting and dying. You're just projecting and like an image of yourself. That's what I've always thought the hunter's dream and how it worked with the respawns in this game specifically. Could it be that this doll was projecting herself out into the world like a hunter as Lady Maria and then ended up, for whatever reason, ending up in that nightmare. Did she go, like, blood drunk or crazy like that? And then ended up being, like, that guardian and then the whole patience and all of that crazy shit that we've got to learn about? Maybe. But I really am getting ahead of myself Good here. Hunter, your presence somehow soothes. I sense the ancient echoes. They course your veins. And not to mention, um... She said that some sort of shackle was released. Like she was trapped there or something. I've returned to where we originally fought Ludwig. This horrible room here. And I'm going to go back up to that elevator, just like you guys said. Only the true blades of the church. Just wondering if that astral clock tower key might be what would allow me to unlock that door, perhaps. I suppose not. However, there is another NPC that I'd love to go visit while we're here. Just down here. You remember him? He was, he was telling me, can you hear that bell ringing? And I told him, no, no, I can't. And I wondered if it was to do some, something to do with insight. You know, maybe I can't. I didn't have enough insight. I think someone said, no, no, don't worry about it. That's not what it is, but. I find it really interesting that he has those antlers. Tried to do switch action, <laughs> not not heal. Still locked. Okay. All right, let's uh, head back up then. Uh, just on the left, we're gonna find the big room. We have the big hallway. We've got rats behind me. I wonder if these NPCs are gonna be respawned, because there's a woman praying, if you recall, and then. Whoops. That wasn't very smooth at all. It's alright. There's a woman praying and then there was a hunter sort of guarding her. Now, it doesn't look like she's there anymore. Okay, neither of them are. In fact, I didn't even notice that, but look at that. That's new. The elevator is up right now. And this was revealed. It, it looks really, really similar to... Do you remember like what it looked like when we first encountered the Vicar Amelia? Um, the giant white wolf woman? Basically, she was praying at something that looked like that, and the skull was on top of this very table. But it looks like this table's been transported and moved somewhere else. And a huge thing about this DLC that someone left a comment... Sorry, I can't remember who, it said, who said this, but the idea that this whole place is almost like Yarnum but remembered poorly. It's like we're in what someone rem remembers of Yarnum. So you have pieces of the puzzle like this and the different cathedrals and you have the overall layout of the city and the main sort of areas and buildings, but they're all slightly askew, you know? Tilted at wrong angles. Um, these weird things that weren't there before. Um, sometimes rooms are 
just not there or folded in, broken, you know, don't exist. You kind of see like the majority and the major things, the important parts of the buildings and the areas, right? But it's all sort of slightly off. And this thing in front of us should be somewhere else, which reminds me again, this really feels like we're just in someone's poorly remembered version of Yarnum. The Surgery Altar. Lawrence's Skull. We're talking... We're talking about Lawrence, the one who left uh, Bergenworth, who was under, you know, mentorship, was being mentored by, uh, oh god, what's his name? I'm sorry, I really can't remember his name right now, but uh, the main guy, main guy at Bergenworth, he's in a rocking chair in the original game. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name right now. But Lawrence left and created the Healing Church, and... When we did the original playthrough, we always said, you know, or rather I always said, it seems like Lawrence had an ideal, right? An idea with all blood and stuff. Um, that he wanted to basically move on and try some new things that his master wouldn't try. Um, he wanted to do stuff with the blood, whereas the master, I'm really sorry, I can't remember his name. He wanted to do things with insight and eyes inside of your head. Basically, they were trying to get towards the same goal, but by doing different things. And then the healing church became a horrible mess of worshipping all blood, monsters, and oftentimes the healing church um, and those who were in it, like the hunters, they became the worst of the monsters, such as Lawrence becoming a giant monster himself. That skull that we touched to remember the conversation when Lawrence left his mentor. This is actually the same skull, but it's not actually a giant beast skull, it's just a man's skull. Skull of Lawrence, first vicar of the Healing Church. In reality, he became the first cleric beast. See, he turned into a horrible cleric beast. And his human skull only exists within the nightmare. The skull is a symbol of Lawrence's past and what he failed to protect. He is destined to seek his skull, but even if he found it, it could never be restore. It could never restore his memories. So, if if you remember, in the nightmare, we had that giant fiery beast that was all like on its back in the place where you actually find Lawrence's skull. I would say that that beast is the body of Lawrence, you know, the terrible cleric beast that he became. And for whatever reason, this head ended up, you know, in the nightmare and he's looking for it. Um, it's a symbol of Lawrence's past. Like, it looks like, you know, a human. So you could say that he was trying to protect humanity and he failed and in the end created the first cleric beast and brought on a lot of what was the whole beast blight on Yarnum. Really interesting. But I think I should take this back now to the sleeping body of what we think is Lawrence, the cleric beast, and see if uh, see if it helps him remember, despite it saying it won't. Here we are back in uh, Uden Chapel, or like I said, the poorly remembered version of Uden Chapel. You see that the urns are still here, but there's not nearly as much as there really would be, and the doorway that we first entered in does not even exist. So, little uh, reminder that this, again, look, no, no hallway there leading into a graveyard. It really is just a poorly remembered version of Yarnum. And let's head back up to the bell tower now. Alright, here we are at the foot of the bell tower. If you don't remember, a big man with an axe is going to come out here and fuck these two up. Oh hey, he actually got hit. Another hit. He actually did pretty. Another hit. Wow. Oh my god. He actually half the health of. He did that actually too good of a job. I actually didn't want this to happen. This makes the fight a lot harder. And of course, I don't get the visceral despite getting there in time. It's all right. I think I got it. Ooh, and I'm dead. Yeah, I can destroy bosses first try, never seen them before. This is still a tough enemy, but to be fair, that random guy made it a lot harder than it should have been. It's alright, I think I got it. Okay, let's uh, try that again. My blood echoes on the floor, or does he have them? I think he might have them. 
Oh no, that random guy was actually the one who had them. Oh god, get up, get up. There we go. Visceral, thank you. Oh my god. It's so nice when you press the visceral button and it actually does a visceral. So nice. Probably should have healed before I picked those up. So here we are, we got the uh, gross amygdala heads with the spears. And the body of what we have come to realize, or what I think is, the body of Lawrence. The cleric beast version of him. Those giant hands. Creepy as shit. Anyway, let's bring him his head. I don't think using fire on my weapon's gonna do much here. Yep, look, something's happening. I doubt this is where I get the twin blades, because we have seen them. I'm probably very close to unlocking the twin blades now. Go on, twitch. Yep. Oh. He has antlers. Just like that guy. That guy that was asking us about the bell. It has antlers. Oh boy, Lawrence the first vicar, yep, I was right, that's Lawrence, wow, this might be slightly harder than the original Cleric Beast fight, something's just giving me that, what, wow. Didn't even hit me. So that made me um, go back up there, start fighting the beast again, whatever, get get back to the boss fight. And then I saw my weapon was apparently at risk. So I'm back here to repair the weapon itself. There we go. And it also made me think about the fact that the cleric beast, well, Lawrence is a cleric beast, right? Which means he's a beast. And I have a gem on my weapon that is basically a weird one, new in the DLC. Physical attack up by massive amounts, right? But 10% less damage against beasts. And it also made me think, maybe I should gem to beat beasts. Like, add damage versus beasts. That's the thing, right? That looks like the only relevant one, which is sort of a shame. But it actually is. There's one that does more against beasts that's more than, what was it? 12.6% we're trying to beat here. Attack point versus beasts up by... 14.5, so that's technically a slightly better against a beast. And of course, this needs to be changed as well. Although, um, the best one I've got is 6.3 physical attack up. I'm gaining how much? 19.8, losing 9.3. So let's say just 9%, 9%. I have plus 10% here overall against the beast, and this is 6.3. So I'd actually lose damage by changing to this. Still, an interesting thing, something to think about. And in your own situation, you might want to re-gem based on, you know, the opponent you know you're going to be facing. Actually re rune so I've got 5% more fire resistance as well. Let's see if that has any effect. 12 seconds later. Okay, if I could roll. Okay, all right. <laughs> he sort of chain stunned me. So bad. This time, I'm gonna just try and stay behind him. That works on the first cleric beast. It should work on this one. And I'm actually gonna use my bolt paper. I realized, uh, just because I can't use my fire paper doesn't mean I can't use the bolt paper, right? Not a good start. It's all right. Okay, so what I wanna do is just stay behind him. That should work. You know what, I'm not even gonna lock onto him. I don't think that's gonna help me much. What are you doing there, bud? Come on. 
He like doesn't even attack me, this one. That was the hog. We got some good damage in. Alright, more damage. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. That was some good damage. Alright, good, good, good. Instantly, this feels like better. Look at these long gangly legs that he's got. Oh, my bolt paper ran out. He's going for a hug. This is a good time to do some more bolt paper. Get a quick heal off. Ah, oh, man, I'm brawling too soon, I think. It's alright, we got him again. There you go, there you go, there you go. Oh, that's the heal. Oh, shit. I was rolling there, but he got me. It's alright, we're not that hurt. But this is the bad part, because he might go for me here. Alright, we're good, we're good. Alright. Oh my god, he just did the same attack, like, back to back three times. That's pretty rough. Whoa. We, like, ran by each other. Alright, if you want to, like, fight me any day... Oh my god. That was close. And another fucking hug. Put some space between us. There you go, there you go, that's it, that's it. Look at the damage. Look at the damage. Whoa! What? Is he like weak? Whoa, 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 whoa! Holy shit! Holy shit! He's like putting lava here. Uh, what am I even looking at? He's like spilling lava out of his backside. Look at that, he's spewing it. It's, this is like, oh my god. Dark Souls 1, remember the fire spider? Quelag, that's the name. Oh, look how low he is. Come on, 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 yes! Oh, thank God. That was harder than it should have been. I feel like I just couldn't beat the normal Claret Beast there for a second. We got him. That was fucking beautiful, the way he was spewing out lava. Really reminded me of Quelag. Oh my God. Beast's embrace. Is that a sign? It is. After repeated experiments in controlling the scourge of beasts, the gentle embrace rune was discovered. When its implementation failed, the embrace became a forbidden rune, but this knowledge became a foundation of the healing church. Those who swear this oath take on a ghastly form and enjoy accentuated transformation effects, especially while wielding a beast weapon. So, claws and those type of weapons, I guess. Enjoy... Transformation effects, like, you know, the Bleep Beast Blood Planet's just more effective on that nature, I guess. Like, more damage you do in quick succession, the more damage it does, right? So that's probably what that does. And I suppose that's what he was using, Lawrence was using. Transformed him to a horrible beast. I wonder if it'll make me visually change. Well, there you go, we beat Lawrence. We beat Lady Maria at the same fucking episode. Talked a lot about lore. And the doll had something new to say. I'm feeling pretty good about it. But we still don't have the twin blades. For some reason, we still don't have the twin blades. Even though we've seen them now. Oh man, I really fucking want them. I don't know how many more bosses are in the DLC as well. How many have we beat? We beat the first one, so uh, Ludwig. Then we beat Lawrence. Lady Maria. Who are we missing? Oh, um, the failed experiments, whatever. So that's four. Four bosses we beat so far. Either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, I will be doing more soon. Hopefully without a three-day gap. Sorry for that. And I hope you enjoyed uh, this one. For now, though, I will have to see you guys next time. 
Hopefully we can find the twin blades already. 